Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Almighty Zentaco, as always. Who else would I be? Uh, and today, we're going to be learning how to make boxes that you can drop. They're going to have gravity, and they're going to be able to collide with other boxes. Now, this may seem like it would be easy, right? It seems pretty basic. But having an object collide with itself or one of its own types is really freaking hard in Fusion. Just going to let you know, it's not simple at all. Um, you could use the physics engine, that would be a lot easier. But we're not going to use the phys physics engine, we are going to hard code this because we like pain here on the Almighty and Taco channel. So, let's set up our scene. So we're going to go ahead and insert a backdrop. Let me resize this because I normally use a 4K monitor. Actually, I always use a 4K monitor. I usually use 4K resolution. Uh, I have to downsize my screen when I record because otherwise it's obnoxiously big. All right, so first thing we're gonna need is a back drop, drop it on in, and then under obstacle type, select obstacle. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and replace this just with green. We're gonna use all stand-in stuff. Um, there we go, stretch to the cross, we just wanna ground. Now we need two objects. We're gonna have a box object and a box mask object. First object here on the left is gonna be box, so name it box. Second object is gonna be box mask, so name it box mask. All right, let's go ahead and let me resize that a bit. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and give this some quick stand-in art. The box is just gonna be a little brown box, like so, with a black outline. You like that vocal fry? It's called a vocal fry. Okay, uh, now keep in mind that the box mask is going to need to be the exact same size as your box. So um, you're either gonna have to, if you have multiple size boxes, you're either gonna have to make multiple masks, or one thing you could do is have the um, each box have animation frames. Each frame could be a different size box, and you can make sure that the mask lines up with the animation frame of the box. That is another method you could employ, but we're just gonna have one size here for this because this is already complicated enough. Box needs to also be a square. I'm gonna give the box a slightly different art style because I'm gonna need to be able to quickly distinguish it in the editor. Let's do it that way. Boom. And I'll put little lines through it because uh, why not? There we go. Okay, so that is our box mask. Right, so our box is gonna need some alterable values. We're gonna need um, five of them. First one is gonna be ID. Second one is gonna be XPOS and YPOS. And we're using these values because we're doing subpixel movement. Then we need an X speed and a Y speed. Now this is gonna be pretty heavy on, um, on the loops. We're gonna be using lots of fast loops. All right, so let's get down to coding. Boom. First thing I'm gonna do, insert a group of events. <clears throat> this will allow me to easily organize my code. So first we're gonna have create the boxes. And then we're gonna insert a new one. And that's gonna be Y move. Now I'm probably gonna come back to this tutorial and add an X move, as well as the ability for a uh, side scrolling character to push the boxes. But this is complicated enough, so we're just gonna do the Y move for this one. Um, yeah, all right, so on create boxes, we're gonna do that this way. Insert a new event. It's gonna be a mouse event, so go to the mouse, and we're gonna say user clicks with the left mouse button. And all we're gonna do is create a box. So the box can go anywhere, that's fine. Um, and once we've created the box, we are going to modify its variables. So click on the box, set the alterable value. Sorry, rather set the position. Set the X coordinate to the X mouse because we wanna create this at the position of the mouse and set the Y position to the Y mouse. Um, okay, we need to make sure that the create event happens first. And then last, we need to plug in the alterable values, uh, X pos and Y pos, and make sure they match up the position. So X pos is going to be the X position, and uh, Y pos is going to be the Y position. 
And I'm just going to copy and modify this line here because that's a little faster. Okay, we need to make sure this is all in the proper order because Fusion likes to get things jacked up in order if you're not careful. Got to be very careful about your event orders or things will not work like you want them to. So first we create, then we're going to move to the X and Y position of the mouse, and then we're going to take that position value and stick it in these alterable values, both X pos and Y pos. As you can see, I already made a mistake. We are setting X pos to Y and X pos to X. If we want to edit this one, we want to set Y pos to Y. Little things like that can blow your code right up. Okie doke. So we have created the object. <clears throat> we can run it now and see that um, we are creating boxes, but they're not doing anything yet because we are not telling them to do anything. Oh, also I've noticed this initial box is here. We don't want that there. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure that it does not create that at start. So we're gonna go ahead and Start the Y move stuff. So we're going to do that with a new event and it's going to be an always event. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is always start a loop. I'm going to call that loop uh, Y move. Or sorry. Now I'm going to call that check underscore Y because this is the loop in which we're going to be checking the position of what's under us. And then if we collide with something, we're going to trigger a collision loop and uh, deal with where we need to position our object. So what we're going to do is run this loop the number of times as there are boxes. So go to count number of objects. We also need to always, so start another always event, and we want to always uh, spread a value. So go to ultra value, spread value. And uh, that's gonna be the value zero and we're gonna spread that in ID. What that does is starting at zero, it's going to increment up and spread numbers throughout all of the instances of these box objects. So if we had 20 of them, it'd be between zero and 19. They would each get their own value. That's important because we're gonna use this to check against the loop index and make sure that we are scoping the appropriate object. This can be very complicated. If you don't know what scoping is, I recommend you check my scoping tutorial out because um, this is going to involve a lot of scoping. Also keep in mind that you can't spread a value on the same line as you start a loop. It just won't work. Um, I'm not sure it matters, but I'm gonna go ahead and move this line here. We're gonna do the spread first. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to be using a flag for this, um, which we're going to need to make sure it's always off, and we're going to be turning its state on and off within the loops. But when we're outside the loop, we want that flag off so that it's nice and fresh and can be used within the loop. So on this always event on line five, we're going to insert a line, and that's going to be the box mask. And you can put this flag anywhere as long as it's consistent, but we're going to put it under the mask. So we're going to set flag zero off. Okay, so we're setting the flag zero off, spreading the value, starting our loop, which is gonna run once for every single one of our box objects. Now, we need to position our mask, and we wanna have it follow the currently, um, the currently scoped box. So to make sure it does that, we need to do this. We need to find out if the alterable value of ID under the box is equal to the loop index parentheses and then put that in quotations and the name of the uh, of the loop goes here which is check underscore y and then close that off so what that is doing there also make sure that the on loop is first within the event <clears throat> okay so what this is doing is um, a loop index is which increment of the loop is running and since this is uh, scoping through or rather running through the loops equal to the number of objects this will make sure that we are addressing the box that we want to address for this loop, meaning that uh, this, this will be scoping a different box every single time it loops, okay? So what are we gonna do here? Well, we're gonna uh, reposition our mask. So set the position of the mask on the X to the X coordinate of our box, easy peasy. Now we wanna do the Y. So set the x or the y coordinate of the box to the y coordinate of. So the mask's y coordinate is equal to the y coordinate of the box, but we want to position it ahead of the box, exactly y speed number of pixels. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to use this uh, mask to check collisions before they happen. We're going to check to see if 
in the next frame where the box is gonna be if a collision is gonna happen. And if that is true and there is a collision there, we're gonna increment that box down one pixel at a time until we are right up against what we would have collided with and then we're gonna stop. So Y box plus, grab the value of Y speed. Now the thing is Y speed can be less than one and we want to always check at least one pixel ahead. So we're gonna to need to do this. Type in max, put a, <clears throat> put a parentheses around this, one, and then a comma, and then close it off. So what that is doing there is uh, max will give you the max value. So we're essentially not allowing us to have a value less than one because we're getting the max between one and the value of Y speed. If Y speed is ever less than one, we will just return one. If Y speed is greater than one, then we'll get the value of Y speed. So we are always adding at least one here. Okay, so now we need to check for collisions. <clears throat> so on loop, check underscore Y. Now find out if the mask is colliding uh, with a backdrop. So that is overlapping a backdrop. Again, make sure the on loop is first. Okay, so if this is happening, then we know that we have collided with a backdrop, or are going to, and we're going to want to do some stuff. So, <clears throat> um, we're going to set up the state of the flag to be on now. So set on flag zero. And that is how we're going to know that we need to, later in the code, we're going to, if the flag zero is on, we're going to uh, trigger the stuff we need to do to deal with these collisions. So, we are colliding with a backdrop, set the flag on. I'm going to copy and paste line eight, just so I don't have to retype this and replace this overlapping backdrop with this. Uh, check to see if the mask is overlapping another object, and that object is the box. Now, and that would be when, when that happens, we wanna set flag zero on. Now this won't work by default because um, the, the mask is following the box, so it's always gonna be colliding with a box. So we need to find out if it is colliding with a box that it's not following. So we'll do that this way. Go to the box alter a value, compare. We wanna find out if the ID is different than the loop index. Of check underscore Y. And uh, we do that after the collision. So <clears throat> on loop check Y, mask is colliding with a box and that box's ID is different than the loop index, meaning it is not the currently looping box. It's not the box we're moving. So then we know that we are now colliding, about to collide with a different box, okay? And when that happens, set flag zero on. So let's do another on loop event. Check underscore Y. Um, so we wanna find out if the flag is off so if the flag is off, that means we haven't collided with anything. So if that's true, we're gonna to need to do some stuff. Um, though we do also need to make sure that the appropriate box is scoped because we wanna make sure that we're moving and updating the box that is currently running. So let's do that this way again. Alter value ID equals loop index. And that was check underscore Y, boom. Um, I do recommend that you just copy and paste it from a different line if you can, because it's a pain to type all that. Anyway, so if we're not colliding with something, we're gonna wanna update the gravity to increase the Y speed and then move the position of our box object. So go to the box, add two, <clears throat> Y speed, and we're gonna add 0 0.1. And then we're gonna go ahead and do something else. We're gonna add to the value of Y position and we're gonna add the Y speed. And then lastly, we are going to set the position of the Y coordinate to the value of Y pos. And we're doing this for the purpose of having sub pixel movement. Okay, let's make sure everything is in order because the order got wonked out while I was doing that. First, we're going to add the gravity, then we're gonna add the Y speed to Y pos, then we're gonna update the position. So that's what you do if uh, a collision is not happening. What if we do have a collision? Well, that'll be this way. On loop, check underscore Y. Oops, I typed that in wrong. There we go. And we wanna find out if the flag is on. And then we want to check the loop index again. So do it in this order. Do on loop check Y, 
flag zero is on, I mean, we've made a collision. And then uh, ID of the box equals loop index of check flag. So if this happens, we need to first go ahead and set that flag off because we're going to need this in the next loop that we're gonna set up. So we're refreshing that up to reuse it. Um, and now we're gonna start another loop. So go to fast loops, start loop, and we're gonna call this collide underscore Y. And I'm gonna run this a negative one amount of times. Now you see the order got uh, reorganized, so fix that so that the that the loop happens last. Okay, anyway, when you run a loop negative one times, this is something I actually just learned, I didn't know you could do this, it runs it infinitely. Now you gotta make sure though that if you do this that you do stop the loop at some point or you'll just stall out your program, it'll crash. So um, it can be good to see just by doing this, you can find out if your loops are running efficiently. All right, so I'm going to insert a comment. And I'm just gonna make it blank. And that's just so I can separate these two sections because now I'm gonna be checking for the, um, the collide loop. Okay, so what we're doing here is now we know <clears throat> um, that a collision was going to happen within the next movement of the box. So, you know, if the box is moving 30 pixels uh, a, a cycle that means that 30 pixels ahead there is a collision so what we're gonna do then is instead of actually ever overlapping with anything we're just going to bring this box down incremented by one pixel at a time until it's flush with what it was gonna collide with and then we're gonna stop the loop and turn off the Y velocity okay so let's do that this way we will say on loop and that was collide underscore Y and then we want to find out if the ID is equal to the loop index of check Y, not to the loop index of collide Y. We're still using the scoping for the original loop. And that's because that is still the same object we're dealing with. Uh, this is the object that collided. This is the object we want to deal with. So we are checking against check Y, not against collide Y. So when that happens, what we're going to do here is update the mask position. So set the y or the x coordinate of the mask to the x coordinate of the box, and then set the y coordinate of the mask to the y coordinate of the box. But this time plus one because we want to have it one pixel ahead. Because what we're going to do is whenever this collides with something, uh, we know that we're flush against it, and we can stop the loop. Otherwise, we're going to keep moving it down. Okay, so now we need to check for collisions. So on loop collide underscore y then we need to find out if the mask is colliding or rather overlapping overlapping that's not word. <clears throat> we need to find out if the mask is overlapping with the backdrop if it is set the flag zero on just like we did before and then we're going to just copy and paste line 14 because we only need to modify one thing and that's the overlapping of backdrop replace that with whether or not the mask is overlapping another object and that is um, the box but again we do need to check to make sure that it is not the box that is the current check y loop so uh, we did that up here on line nine i'm just going to copy that and then paste it and if that's true all we do is set on flag zero so now we need to do something if flag zero is not on meaning we never collided so if it's not colliding we need to bring it down by one so on loop collide y on loop collide y um, we want to find out if the ID is the same as the loop index and then lastly we want to check and see if the flag is off is the flag zero off do it in this order do the on loop collide y ID equals loop index of check Y and is flag zero off, meaning we're not colliding with something. So if that's the case, go to the box, add, add to Y pos one. So we're moving it down. And then set the Y coordinate to Y pos. And make sure that you, you have the order. So it's add one to Y pos and then set Y position to Y pos. So now we need to do something if a collision has occurred. And that's really simple. We'll do again on loop. And that was collide underscore Y. 
um, and we want to find out again if the I oops I deleted that I'm gonna copy this uh, it's is the ID the same as the check Y index and lastly it's almost the exact same event as 16 and we want to know if flag zero is on if it's on we know from up here on means that we have collided with a backdrop or with a box so all we're gonna do then is we're gonna set the alt scroll value of Y speed to zero and then we're gonna refresh this flag. So go to flags, set off, flag zero. That allows us to reuse it. And then lastly, we're just gonna stop this loop so it doesn't run forever. So stop loop, and that was collide underscore Y. Oops, there we go. Uh, make sure you stop the loop last because it will be stopping the loop and it will not finish whatever else it was doing if you don't do it in that order. Okay, so pretty sure that that is literally everything we need to do so it is only 17 lines of code there let's test it hopefully i didn't mess something up well that worked we got two let's make a couple of them all right so it looks like it functions um if you set up two directional collisions on the y you could actually have a nice bounce effect when these hit um, you can do that simply by multiplying the y speed instead of saying to zero you would multiply it by a negative like 0 0.5 and that would give you a speed in the opposite direction half of what it was when you collided which will create a pretty interesting little uh, bounce effect let's add one more thing real quick on the create the boxes let's go ahead to the mouse and say user clicks on an object and we're going to say a right mouse button click and that's gonna be on the box. And what we're gonna do is destroy the box. This will let us destroy boxes and uh, play around the physics. Lastly, I'm going to turn off the, uh, I'm, I'm going to, where is it? Ah, I don't want this mask to be visible, so I turn it off being visible at start. Let's give it a check. So it seems to work pretty good and we can delete the boxes and as you see they will they will fall properly so this is pixel perfect collision with objects of the same type which is as you can see not super easy and you got to make sure that you get this stuff exactly right you make a little mistake on this code and it's just gonna blow up and you're not gonna understand why it's gonna be very frustrating so I recommend that you go over it with a fine tooth comb all right well I hope you guys found this useful uh, next time I'm gonna be adding a movement on the X axis as well as the ability to push this by uh, with a player object and um, maybe add some animations for the player while pushing and stuff like that. All right guys well as always thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below or even better join my discord channel link in the description. Hope you guys have yourself a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.